season 46, war number 8, and we are up against AF, and this time my team will be Kate Bishop, Mantis, and Geo. I will be taking path 5 in section 1, path 5 in section 2, and then I will be taking a Sandman, Jessica Jones, and Titania miniboss, followed by that silk boss there with Geo. And as you can see, I'm joining this war pretty early, I basically told the other planner that I just want to get in and get my fights done ASAP since I wasn't sure I was gonna be available for the rest of the war so just gonna smash these fights out using some energy refills and just going for it starting off here we have an America Chavez on the event flow knockdown and right back adding nodes and I am taking the fight with Kate Bishop now this fight is extremely simple with Kate. You just drop a couple special ones and then wait for Chavez to fall over due to the cold snaps. And that's about it. Now I did make a slight mistake. I'm a little bit rusty with Kate so I missed the perfect release on the first special one. So my damage output is not as high as it should be right now. But that's fine, she is still melting quite quickly and she is nice enough to actually throw her special ones here instead of only spamming heavies for example. Fight goes down in roughly 40 seconds, no damage taken and that's what I like to see. Kate Bishop still one of the better war champions out there. Even without the decay tactic anymore. Anyways next up here we have a two fix it on the event flow knockdown and heavy hitter nodes and I am taking this fight with Geo. Basically the main thing I need to worry about here is the defense tactic, so I just gotta make sure I have the taunt up before baiting any special ones. If the taunt falls off for whatever reason, all I gotta do is just push him to his special 2 and dex that, which is, well, a lot easier than even trying to deal with the special one without the taunt, rather the steadfast from the attack tactic. Now, the heavy hitter node does make the defender unstoppable when they are throwing their heavy attack, but the grid passive from t special one allows her to bypass unstoppable, so the node doesn't really come into play so long as you can actually keep throwing your special ones over and over. Just a few more hits now, and the fight is essentially over. I did take some cheap damage here and there from blocking all those special ones, but that's fine. You know the drill, it's just gonna cost a potion or two, and that's perfectly fine. As long as I don't die, I don't care if I have to use items. Though that said, using units and potions as often as I have this season already, it does sting a bit, but it is what it is. I like playing war, so having to spend some resources to do so, it's not that big of a deal. It's just annoying, and well, that's about it. Now, next up here we have a Morbius on the event flow intercept and sadist nodes, and I will be taking this fight with Mantis. And this is a 7 star rank 3 Morbius, so I was slightly concerned, but I did the rough math beforehand, and a special 2 into a special 3 should be enough damage to finish this guy off, so that is what I'm gonna be doing here. Now to start off I used the Intimidate first to ramp up the mixed emotions to begin with and then baited out the Psionic Glide before getting a few more mixed emotions chain the heavy attack into special 2 with the skill power back boosts and immediately chained in that special 3 for a quick dance break and the fight is over went just about, just about as well as it could have and the rough math worked out this time at least. Then here we have a Werewolf by Night on the Mighty Charge and Ebon Flow Intercept nodes, and I will be taking the fight with Kate Bishop. I went ahead and put on the Cryo Arrow pre-fight, since I really don't want to be having to manually swap my arrows in the middle of the fight here, and I backed out there just to make sure it actually sticks. Normally I don't really feel the need to make sure and check with Kate Bishop, but Werewolf by Night is one of those trickier defenders for me with Kate, so I figured it wouldn't hurt. Just wanted to make sure I wouldn't have to deal with any anything extra here. Now also I have done some practice against these special ones, since last season I had some 
issues trying to avoid an exit, so I took some time to make sure I actually know how to do it here before going in this fight. And as you can see, it was worth the effort. Now I'm not eating it by panic dexing, so all is good, all is well, he's going down, a few more seconds with that cold snap on, and down he goes. Wasn't really a perfect fight, I did drop the first cold snap, but that's alright, it was still done under a minute and no real risk of death there. And next up here we have a Sandman on the Power Focus 2 and Scared Stiff miniboss node, and I will be taking this fight with Mantis. And actually, just now thinking about it, I probably could have taken this fight with Kate Bishop using the same exact same exact game plan here, and it would have been a lot faster. But um, yeah, maybe next time. Anyways, the game plan here is to just bait Sandman Special 1 over and over again, use the Tranquilize to deal with the root debuff as well as any of the debuffs that Sandman would trigger on his specials, and then just spam your own Special 1 with Mantis here, with the Fury Ramping bug that I have showcased before. Now, this fight is not gonna be too fast, and technically I could have gone for special 2s as well to speed things up, but the main thing with Mantis and her special 2s with this set of tactics, and this root node especially, is the fact that when you charge up your special 2, or rather you charge up your Furies with the heavy attack for the special 2, you are wasting so much time on the taunt, as well as the root timer here, that I just don't see it as being worth it, so... Slow and steady was the game plan. I did some duels beforehand to make sure I have the decks down perfectly for this guy's special one, since I really did not want to eat it and get one hit KO'd by a Sandman, because that's just... that's a bad way to go, and I would never leave it down if I did. Now, as I said, just at the start of the fight, I could have done this exact same thing with Kate Bishop with the cold snaps and he would have been died or would have been dead two times over by now and um yeah that's that that's on me. Either way the fight is going down without any bigger problems. He is throwing those special ones, I don't have to deal with the root, and everything went down alright, just about as well as I had planned. But um yeah that's not really sure what to say there. Either way, the fight went down, it went well, so I can't really complain. Oh, and also, right there, I accidentally bought the big energy refill when I only needed the small one, since I have my other BG officer here helping me out with energy, so a few units wasted again, so that's, that's great. Anyways, here we have a Jessica Jones on the Missing in Action and Power Efficiency miniboss node, and I will be taking this fight with Geof, who is basically a perfect counter to the specific defender with all the cleanses, as well as the ability to bypass Unstoppable, along with a ton of bleed damage. As long as I don't eat or block her special ones, and this fight is nothing to worry about. And um, yeah, I ate a sink from a defending Jessica Jones. But I didn't die to it, and the only reason that didn't happen is because Geoth is apparently bugged, and her cleanses are cleansing more debuffs than they should. Each single cleanse is only meant to shrug off a single debuff, but for whatever reason her cleanses are targeting all debuffs that trigger at the same time, so I was saved there by pure luck and nothing more. No other champion's cleanses work the same way as hers does, or hers do for whatever reason, so yeah, Kabam Jesus was on my side in this fight, and I walked away with full health, which definitely <laughs> shouldn't have happened, but I'm very glad that it did, because dying in war due to eating a sink from Jessica Jones, and that's a bad way to go, so I'm, I'm glad that that wasn't the case. Now, don't try that at home, I'm fairly sure the bug is getting fixed, so yeah, that's 
just don't try it. Uh, I don't recommend it. Either way, this next fight here is a Titania on the Starting Reflection and Polkadot Tower Miniboss node, and I am taking the fight with Geoth. And due to all the bleeds that Geoth has, this fight should be quite simple. I'm just gonna bleed her out, and that's about all there is to it. The main thing I need to keep an eye on is to just have the taunt up before baiting any specials, since Titania is a tactic defender, and I really don't want to eat those specials without the steadfast up. I can usually fully dex the special one even while rooted, but just for safety reasons I'm trying not to rely on that here. Now, un unfortunately I did get pushed up to my special 3 this soon into the fight, which means that the regeneration buff I get is not gonna be all too strong. I like to save it as a backup in case something goes wrong. But at the same time, the special 3 also does give you that vicious passive, increasing your bleed potency, so that makes the fight faster in that regard at least. Now, so far the fight has not been too clean, but Titania can't really do anything to chill here. She will cleanse the majority of the debuffs, the bleeds just melt her down, and the grid passive from the special one also allow me to ignore the unstoppable from the haymaker, allowing me to reset the brute force timer even while it's up, with no risk of actually getting punished for it, at least. Now, just looking at Titania's health, health bar here, it's just melting, and the fight does go down without any bigger problems. The start of the fight just wasn't that well played by me, but it worked out in the end. Now, the other BG officer here, who's also responsible for most of the artwork on this YouTube channel, White Mummy, was kind enough to help me with the energy, as well as throw on some pre-fights here for Silk, although Mr. Fantastic pre-fights don't do anything for this specific matchup, since I'm not planning on knocking her down all too often. Either way, they don't hurt, and there was no other place to use them on at this point, so might as well just throw them on for some little extra bleed potency at the very start of the fight. And yeah, this is the last fight of this war, a Silk boss that I'm taking with Geo, just as I did earlier in the season. Now this one is only a 6 star, rank 5, or rather 6 star ascended I guess, so the health pool is not gonna be as high as the previous one was. The game plan is the same, I'm just gonna be baiting the special once over and over again, with the taunt up, then just block the special, keep hitting her, and that's about all there is to it. I will try to throw in some specials here and there, mainly the special one, whenever the evade is on cooldown, just to get some more bleeds going, whenever possible. Now the main thing to worry about here is to just have the taunt up before I, or a seal can get any specials, otherwise a single special from her, and you are most likely dead. Although Teal might be tanky enough to actually survive at least one of them, I don't want to try it out, so I'm just gonna block them. Now I went over how to bait her specials in the previous war, but I can go over it real quick here as well. Basically, the easiest way to bait a special one from Silk is hitting her block once and immediately dashing back. She tries to catch you on the dash back, so just as soon as you have dashed back, hold block and you should be just fine. It doesn't work every time, but it works often enough to make it predictable and something that you can actually mostly rely on, making these bosses a lot easier to deal with. Here, once again, I just wait for her to block, hit her block once, dash away and hold block, and Silk follows up immediately with that special one. The boss goes down in under 2 minutes. This one was a very clean one, no real mistakes on my part, and I am very happy with how the war went overall, though I did make some mistakes and the planning error for the Sandman did cost us some time, but hey, I didn't die, so I'm happy with it. As for the results, we did end up winning the war 75-4, to 4. so um, yeah, not much else to say about that.